Good morning, Grizzly fam. And so I'm doing this vlog because yesterday, um, you know, we went to this gathering for a neighbor of mine who lives where I live. He, she had extended family coming from out of state, right? And basically, um, you know, they were... It was a child's birthday. This is what absolutely infuriates me. When all the guests finished arriving, there was alcohol and weed present at this party. I couldn't really understand why the hell they would have drugs and alcohol at a child's party. Um, that's a very messed up thing to do. Um, and I'm finding out that a lot of people who were there yesterday were never meant to be there. Um, a lot of the folks who showed up unbeknowingly were n never supposed to arrive or had even known about what was going on. And there was a gentleman who, him and his gr girlfriend were high on meth. And um, this guy kept on undoing the, there was a, okay, so let me explain. They had a barbecue, it was hamburgers and hot dogs. And um, they had chips, soda for the kids and little juice packets. And then they brought wine coolers and some other extra alcohol. And they also brought marijuana. And um, also, at some specific point during the end of the event, uh, the, the gentleman that was high on meth kept it on. He kept on undoing the bounce house for the kids. Mind you, almost the entire time, every single time that he kept on undoing it. There were children inside. Um, do you want to say something in regards to that? Or no? I can switch to you. No. Hi guys. Okay. So we can get a big hit. Okay. Okay. So what? We were talking about the bounce house. Mhm. Mm so this guy, he kept on plugging the plug to the bounce house. So the first time there was a child that was in there, if it wasn't for my mom, that child would have ended up dying. Um, he did it like two more times, but that two more times there was somebody inside the bounce house, so thank God. Um, um, and then he was not supposed to not be invited to, to the birthday party. At all. And the lady was telling him, no, you're not invited. And, and then they... Then he just invited him on himself, and she was angry, so we went, after that, we went back to her house, and we said, wait, what did we say, Mom? Oh, okay, so good point. Um, so out of sheer concern for those who were still there when we left, we actually returned. We came home, we dropped off, you know, the stuff that we need to leave here at the house, and then we returned over there to check up on the kids, because we thought that he would do it a fourth time, because people who are high have no freaking idea what the hell they're doing. And so, you know, we returned, we saw there was absolute nobody inside, we saw that nobody was outside, so there was no problem. <clears throat> we go around to the wonderful neighbor's house. And that seemed to be where everybody was at. And uh, we came to find out that the guy that was high on meth and his wife or girlfriend, I don't know what their status is, but um, we found out that uh, the daughter tried to jump her mother. And that in itself was extremely, extremely troubling to me. Um, and I believe part of that is the spiritual warfare. I also believe that, um, she also was high on meth. I also believe that, you know, she has the presence of God and this is why the girl must have not liked it, her daughter, because she carries that presence of God and it doesn't matter what we face. He's always there. He's always present and he's the all sufficient. And so, um... You know, it was really upsetting to hear that. I wish I had stayed present there to protect her. Um, because had I been there, I would have never let that happen to begin with. But it seems almost like they were waiting for me to leave. So it would give them ammunition. And during this altercation, um, all the neighbors were staring. Everybody. And so um, upon arriving to her home... The little boy that I saved 
uh, walked up to me and gave me this massive hug. And I was just like, huh? Honestly, I was really dumbfounded. I had no idea why that was going on. Um, I'm just a lover of humanity. So as a result, I'm going to protect children naturally. It is in my instinct to do that. And so he, you know, came up to me and gave me this really compassionate hug. Like it's a hug that I will never forget until I die. And, um, you know, it was really, really amazing just to experience that. I can tell you for a fact, when I was in the process of saving him, that bounce house was extremely heavy. Um, not oh, yeah, only was it extremely heavy, forget. I could hear the plastic covering his little face. And that honestly, as a mom, no parent wants to face that, you know, and it was absolutely freaking horrifying to hear, hmm, like it sounded like a muffle helped me. Like, had I not been that close, nobody would have heard me because they had this really gross music playing. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things, you know, like, oh, my God, it's like do or die type of a situation. I could hear him desperately pleading. It's on me. It's on me. I can't breathe. Say help. Uh, help me, you know, crying out for help. And um, he's blessed because right in his moment of need, my daughter, my oldest daughter and I were there. Um, and so we lifted up everything and he safely made an exit. Had we been literally three seconds later, he would have been dead. Um, and everybody there. OK, let me let me just bring this up, OK, because this shit has been bothering me since last night. I'm sorry, YouTube. I'll keep it PG. I know the way you guys are hypersensitive, so. All these up on the language. Um, and there were two tall gentlemen who looked to be very strong. And they just sat there talking a bunch of mess and laughing and this and that while I was over there saving the kid. I'm like, excuse me? You butterballs are not capable of getting up and helping me? Really? These are tall, strong guys. And they couldn't budge. But again, alcohol and weed were there. So when those two things mix, people get sick. People, you know, are out of it. Um, and so I saved uh, this little boy. And just to, you know, get that hug from him, it was like transforming in a way. And as the more time passed, I was talking to grandma and to the granddaughter and, you know, I'm so blessed to be among people who think like me because the young woman, this is like her little nephew, and she just doesn't want to see him being exposed to, you know, meth and to alcohol like that. Uh, from what I'm understanding, the little boy constantly is being caught up in the crossfire between mom and dad, beating the crap out of each other, constantly fighting. And that's not a life to live. It's not... A circumstance worth being in and so she told me that she's gonna legally get some documentation have them sign it and that um, you know she's gonna go back home to Phoenix and you know take care of the little boy that she has two jobs which that in itself is a very huge step for such a young person she's younger than myself I'm 33 she had to be no more than 26 years old because she looks super young and um, she also has two kids of her own, you know, at home and her current boyfriend and things like that. So it would actually be a very stable familial setting versus being exposed to meth, you know, and alcohol, the constant violence, the constant fighting and bickering and all of that. And so I'm so excited and, you know, happy for this little boy because he's really really sweet you know that hug that he gave me it like it stays embedded in my mind like I just can't believe how generous you could tell that he's gonna be a generous little boy just by the way you know he gave me that hug and um it was just really really surprising to receive a hug like that and I couldn't put two and two for some reason I was out of I was really tired but just to experience that was so significant because that just showed that I made such a huge impact in his life. 
Um, and I'm just blessed that I could be a part of that. I'm blessed that, you know, he's alive to share his story. And I'm sure he'll go on and be a warrior just like the rest of us. And with that being said, guys, I got to go get breakfast started. So I am going to clock out this vlog. But Grizzly fam, if you like what you're seeing and all that, please do the whole spiel. Subscribe, like, whatever. You know the whole damn nine. Um, and um, I'm going to be doing some cool videos. I'm going to do one today later on this afternoon and then probably the other one tomorrow. Um, so you're actually not going to want to miss it. This channel is going to be freaking awesome, dude. And I'm still going to continue to do my paranormal videos. So you guys are not going to miss it subscribe tell people to subscribe as many as possible and this shit's gonna be lit all right y'all i'm out